Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to revisit Class 5 armor in 12.12. One of the largest fundamental shifts in the latest patch was the removal of most of the traditional high-end armors off the fleet, but leaving them on the traders, which has dramatically changed the structure of how players progress and what we can use. Despite needing Prapol 3 or Ragman 3 to get the lowest performing Class 5s, understanding how they perform is important because primarily so many players are using Class 4, which leads to people also specifically buying rounds that defeat it. This means, in theory anyway, that against a player using class 5 right now, the players with loadouts tuned versus class 4 will struggle to get through the armour. That's as long as they don't get shot in the face, of course. Even if you're not able to use class 5 yet, understanding what you could be up against as the white progresses is key to PvP survival in the months ahead. First off, I'm going to quickly run through how durability works in Tarkov. If you've heard this before from my class 4 guide, feel free to skip to the next chapter because it will be basically the same concept, but I want to include it for those watching these videos for the first time. In Tarkov, the durability number that you see in-game on the armour is only half the story. The material that it's made of changes the amount of damage that the armour itself takes when it gets hit. This stat is called destructibility, and a table with the relevant quantities per material can be found on the wiki on the ballistics page. This number is best thought of as a percentage of how much damage the armour takes to durability when it gets hit. 0.8 means an armour takes 80% of the durability damage versus some base. 0.5 means it takes 50%. The lower this number is, the more durable an armour is in reality, and practically to compare between different armours, we can use a modified number called the Effective Durability, which is the regular durability in-game divided by the Destructibility stat. This gives us one number that allows us to easily contrast the different armours against each other for raw protective performance. Applying the Effective Durability calculation to the armours in Class 5 gets us to the following table from highest to lowest. This hasn't actually changed in 12.12 versus 12.11, but what we can buy is very different now to how it was previously because of the flea market changes. The top armors for pure protection are still the ones with massive movement, turn and ergo debuffs, as well as including controversial armed protection. Class 5 differs to Class 4 significantly in this regard, where it's not just as simple to plug the numbers in for durability and buy the best one for price. The issue with arms protection is that because there is only one durability pool for the armour overall, your thorax coverage gets damaged when the arms get hit, this increases the likelihood of you dying outright to follow up shots to the chest. The same argument can be said for stomach protection, but the stomach multiplies damage by 1.5 times versus the arms by only 0.7, so you're actually at much greater risk to dying from flesh damage to the stomach than you are to the arms. All that said, the first armour in our list is the Redoubt T5, which was basically non-existent in 12.11 because there were almost always better options available, and actually looks like great value at the moment in 12.12, which is probably because it's on Ragman 4 and not that many players have access to it yet. Plus, it's never been near meta in recent history due to its insane debuffs on move speed. For only 6 air filters and 2 power cords, it is kind of looking like a bit of a bargain at around 140k-ish though, so there's one to keep an eye on. The Gen 4 fault for 3 Lions is just silly as this is way too much. This is quite volatile, but at around 350k it's just not worth it I don't think. Part of the problem is that Lions sell to therapists for 103,000 rubles so they won't ever go under this on the flea, meaning that this will only ever be at least 300,000 rubles to buy. A strange point to note is there's a couple of armors missing from this list completely. The Gen 4 Assault, Killers 6B13 and the Defender 2. As these don't have trader barters or purchases, and after being removed from the flea market, they are no longer purchasable whatsoever. If you pick them up, you can compare the stats here, but we can't choose them anymore as routine armours. Next up is the AACPC. This armour is the best rig in class 5, thorax only protection, and has stats that rival the killer armour. The barter has always been fairly cost effective for this at 190k currently, but you have to not only have access to Ragman 4, but also in 12.12 a lot of armours have been locked behind quests. For this one, you have to complete the long line quest, which firstly involves being level 45 to begin with, and then killing 30 PMCs in interchange. If the poll I did at the end of 12.11 is anything to go by, only around 20% of the player base will even reach this point to pick up the AACPC at all. On to the Redoubt M. This was once a fan favourite of mine that I used all the time in 12.11, which was firmly in the centre of class 5. Decent protection, manageable debuffs, and previously about 130k, now it's only available at Ragman 3 for 240,000, so it's not such great value anymore. When theorising about 12.12, I did think the 240k price was insane, but looking at the early options from the table, it doesn't actually seem as out of place as it did initially. Alongside the Redoutem sits the Gen 4 Mobility, which was always another popular choice in the same price bracket previously. As you can see, they are very close in protection and stats, and with the barter the only way to get this in 12.12 is surprisingly close to the reducing cost, although GP coins are tied to many other item barters which ultimately controls the demand for these. 
I still think this is kind of expensive, but it could be one to watch out for if you have non-Finding Raid GP coins sitting around. One armor that's looking pretty good right now is the Tactech. Available from Ragman 3 with a barter and not locked behind any quests, it also has very good stats and is only a small notch down versus the other four rigs above it in overall durability. Although apparently this is not much of a secret because it sells out in a few minutes from Ragman given the global limit is really quite low. I didn't see exactly when the timer reset but it looks to be about 200. Its internal configuration is a touch limited as it has only got 1x1 and 2x1 slots but this is only to its benefit from an insurance perspective when combined with the fact that physically it takes up 4x4 so it's quite decent for returns overall relatively speaking as well as being polymer material which repairs super well. The Osprey is still a bit of an odd fit with arms protection but no stomach. I don't like this especially on the lower durability armour and the only way to get this is from Peacekeeper 4 after completing Peacekeeping Mission. You'll need to be level 37 to get Peacekeeper 4 anyway, and at 185k rubles it might be worth a try if you can't get hold of anything better, but given its price and progression I'd say to stick with the tech. tech. The final two are the most accessible and the ones you're probably going to see the most at this point, which is the Gazelle or the Gazelle if you want to try to use the Russian pronunciation and the Karund. As per the table, these start to really suffer on overall durability which means that despite being class 5, their protection gets eroded down really quickly. I have done a video in the past comparing these two which is a bit old now but broadly speaking the Gajel is better performance and survivability wise in any one specific raid but being ceramic it repairs really badly and is much faster to have to junk so the Karund tends to work out better economically despite it being strictly worse overall in actual raids. This is in part due to the Karund's armour steel material which repairs very well and because of this is usable over many more sessions. It's also a bit larger too at 4x3 rather than 3x3 and doesn't have any quests requiring players to hand them in either which can put people off taking them out of raids and failing your insurance. That said, its repairability is a feature that works just as well for your enemies that kill you as well as it is for you when you get them back. If they don't have the quest, players are also quite put off taking broken gazelles out of raid too because everybody knows that ceramic repairs really badly. One large problem with the Karunt is the minus 18% movement speed which actually does make a big difference and loses an extra 6% ergonomics versus the Gajel. They're about the same price using the barter but once the cash purchases are unlocked the Karunt is pretty good value at 113k. Both of these are decent choices to move into class 5 without breaking the bank but they work especially well at tanking larger shots at medium distance than in CQB as getting peppered down by even routine rounds like BT are likely to wear them down too quickly and get through anyway. Which is best between these two is really close and usually comes down to whether you want to economise but have class 5 with the Karund or if you want decent protection along with move speed at a fair price with the Gajel. So overall what do I think is the best class 5 armour to use in 12-12 for regular players? I think at the moment best bang for buck is the Tech Tech. It's sold out really quickly so you'll have to camp the trade of reset unfortunately and you'll also need to check the barter items frequently too to try and get a good deal. It is possible to get this quite a bit cheaper than 180k if you can pick up the gas masks for around 20 and the other masks for less than 10. However this is not going to be economic for many players and the lack of decent helmets with visors that don't cover the ears too limits the value of these expensive armours when a stray pellet from a shotgun can end your raid in an instant. If you do make it to Ragman 4 anytime soon, the jury's out on the Redoute T5 given it has the highest durability of the class and a cheap barter, although I think the movement debuffs will cause it to remain a niche pick much like the Zabralo at class 6. Finally, as a reminder, what class 5 actually does for you is at 100% durability, your opponent, or you if you want to defeat it, have to have at least 47 pen to have a 50% chance to pen straight off the bat, which is the penetration of 762 BP rounds at point blank. Do you consider though that at 100 meters BP the chance drops to 28% with 12-12's new ballistic changes? At this range you need 50 pen approximately but there are actually very few rounds between 47 and 50 so this doesn't affect the high-end ammo much at all. This means that you should be able to soak up plenty of hits from the class 4 optimized rounds with the higher durability armors. M80 at 100 meters only has a 5% chance to pen on the first hit for example. And even the lowest of class 5s, namely the Karund, can still absorb that first bullet just as well as the best ones, which is its main plus point over any of the class 4s, and why it's typically better for medium range fights rather than point blank. So as usual, if you learned something, please consider dropping a like and a comment. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Check out our Scav Talk podcast in the links below. And with all that said, I'll see you next time. And as always, have fun in your raids.